Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course on organic farming. In my previous lectures, you have learned about what is organic farming, what is the definition of organic farming and what is the trend in global as well as India, what is the organic growth of different value and produce and I have, we have also work out different type of organic menus which are used in organic farming. We have also seen what type of different soil and crop management practices which is needed for a successful organic farming like crop rotation, cover crops, mulching, intercropping, role of legumes. We have too much emphasized on the compost because in organic farming we cannot apply any inorganic fertilizer like urea, DAP, SSP or MAP. So one of our major source of organic nutrient for giving the nutrients to the plant under organic farming is the compost. So, there are different types of compost and different methods of composting. Composting is very much needed as such a crop residue and other things is not advisable to applicable in the field. Always we should go for production of compost, maybe different type of compost or vermicompost. So, in this lecture I will duly mention the what are the different type of compost and what is the different type of procedure for this compost preparation. If we see just I have divided my content into this small sum part is maybe the introduction of the compost, what are the different types of compost, methods of composting, maybe the vermicomposting also and what will be the different type of earthworms which is needed for the vermicompost preparation. Similarly, a new development has been done by the National Center for Organic Farming, Gajiabad. They have produced one consortium of microbes that is called OST composer and it is known to reduce the process, time process for composting so that it will be very easily available for the plant nutrient growth. And also what is the different nutrient concentration, how much nutrient A and P, K and micronutrient present in this compost, I will deal with this. So the word compost comes from the Latin word compostum which means to bring together. Use of compost can improve the soil structure, aeration and increase the soil water holding capacity. Soil structure is a very big term mainly soil structure roles different type of whenever we apply some type of compost, maybe it is cow dung, maybe it is of FOM or maybe vermicompost, it changes the soil physical structure, it reduces the bug density so that in the spore phase there will be more air. So, in the ARSN will be more or bug density or compactness of a soil is reduced and that is very much necessary for successful growth because most of the plant parts which take the nutrients are under the soil. If soil is too much compact, then it will be tough for the roots to go deeper layer and to fetch the nutrients. So, in this condition, our compost helps to increase the aeration and reduce the bug density. Also, they have rolled the soil water holding capacity. A capacity of the soil water holding of a soil determines how the crop growth will be there if there is no rain for a particular time period or there is no irrigation facility. So, if a soil has a very good water holding capacity, this soil will provide more yield. So, in that condition, whenever we are applying some time of organic manure or compost in our field, they have a very high surface area. So, apart from the holding the nutri water, so the water holding capacity, they are also known to uptake of the different type of nutrition, they absorb the different type of nutrition. So, the nutrient loss from the soil will be minimized. Similarly, the composting is a very old art and some of its basic principle have been appreciated. It is essentially a microbiological decomposition. So, it is a process of the biological decomposition. So, there are of sub needs of biological organisms in this composting. It is not directly a chemical process. We need lots of biological biota or biological organisms have play a major role, but most of them are microbic in nature. So, it is called microbiochemical decomposition. Compost is the organic matter that has been decomposed and recycled as a fertilizer and soil amendment. So, whenever we are giving too much of suppose crop residue is there, it is may be very high in amount, the, it will be bulky in nature. So, that is not compost. 
when we have kept somewhere and we have gone through some process of the composting and they become a very odorless, very friable, maybe blackish or brownish type of culture. So, when the decomposition has finalization or complete, then only we call it is a compost. So, why composting is necessary? Biological materials contain complex chemical compounds such as lignin, cellulose, hemicellulose, polysaccharide, proteins and lipids. The complex materials should be converted into simply inorganic elements. The materials put into the soil without conversion will undergo conversion inside the soil. So, particularly who we have shown whenever we applying some type of residue may be wheat straw or rye straw, their carbon is to nitrogen ratio is very high. And whenever the carbon that is the C n ratio of any waste product is very high. So, for decomposition of the soil in the microbes, they need lots of nitrogen because they maintain a certain type of stable C is to n ratio probably 8 is to 1. So, in that condition to decompose the organic materials which are available in our wheat straw in others high C is to n ratio straw they immediately absorb whatever the nitrogen available in the area. So, when the nitrogen is been absorbed by the microbes, so immediately there may be some nitrogen deficiency for crop plants. It is called immobilization. So, after certain times when the microbes are decayed or died and after their decomposition, this nitrogen may be released, but there may be temporary nitrogen deficiency. So, we are always advocating whatever the waste materials is there do not do directly apply the soil. It is always advisable to make some compost or composting, so that their C is to N ratio, it is become narrowed down to maybe 10 is to 1 or 12 is to 1. Similarly, this conversion process takes away low energy and available nutrients from the soil affecting the crop, hen conversion period is mandatory. If we see the suppose poultry manure, we want to feed directly in the field. Whenever we take the poultry manure from a heap, this poultry manure is too much there is heat. We cannot directly use this poultry manure in our field. So, there will be damage to the crop. But if we go for the decomposition, the heat or energy will be gone and it, when the it will not be heat or it will be decomposed properly, then only we can apply especially for the organic farming. So, composting car manure if you are see in this picture, there is lots of cow that is our rice straw is being harmed on the soil. So, immediately if we apply this type of rice straw in our field, there may be temporary immobilization and there may be nutrient deficiency. So, always it is better to first go for composting, then only we apply in the soil. So, uh, in the process, it is become a nutrient rich fertilizer. For here nitrogen content is very less, but whenever it is become go the process of decomposition and also whenever we see, when composting we are cow manure, size of the pile is important. So, whenever there is lots of process is composting method and we have to adopt a suitable composting method which is particularly applicable that type of materials also depend different types of composting method is there, but which type of composting method we will use we have to decide according to the agroclimatic condition and also the feeding materials. So, whenever we are applying in this soil it improves the overall health of the soil and produce healthy vigorous plants. So, what is the benefits of compost? cow manure. Whenever there is some cow manure, there is some harmful gas is there that is called ammonia. This ammonia gas is being gone away in the process of composting and similarly, a pathogen is very important pathogen is present in case of some type of cow manure. This is Escheria E. coli. So, this Escheria E. coli sometimes is harmful to our body. So, if we directly apply the cow manure to our organic farm, this E. coli may also come to our food chain through the organic fruits and vegetables. But if we go this cow manure through the process of proper decomposition process, so there will not be a very less amount of E. coli. So, it is always advisable to go for first composting, then only you use this type of cow manure in our field. It also eliminates the weed seed because I have already told the plants whenever rice we are taking, we are growing the cattle seed, cattle are also taking too much of grasses and this grass contain lots of seeds and whatever the seeds they are consuming, it is not easily decomposed. So, they pass, pass through the cow dung or excreta. Sometimes we are also applying lots of jungle biomass or in the periphery whatever the plants is there, we are chopping and we mix with the cow dung and we are applying the soil. So, there is a very high chance of contamination. So, this undecomposed FOIM 
is a very high source of weed materials because they contain a huge amount of weed seeds. So, it is always, but if we go for the composting process, most of these weed seed will be decomposed. So, whenever we apply this FOM in your field, our weed will be less because in organic farming, we cannot use any herbicide. So, when we cannot any herbicide, we have to take care of these small, small things in very efficiently so that we can manage our organic farm very well. It improves the soil water holding capacity, I have already discussed. It also contains certain beneficial bacteria. There is, we are used to know this cow dung when it go in the process of the composting and different type of liquor manure also when go through sometimes, they also contain different type of beneficial bacteria, some may be phosphorus solubilizing, some for the nitrogen fixer. They also help, so release of the nutrients and they also fixation of the nutrients and that is very much needed even they have supply 10 to 15 percent of the whatever the plant demand nutrients that helps a lot because we cannot apply any inorganic fertilizer under organic farming. So, they also produce a less greenhouse gas emission, so it is become environment friendly. And we have also sometimes seen some smoke generated from burnt cow dung used as mosquito repellent and some cleaning agent on the kitchens. So, this cow manure, compost cow manure also have too much antibacterial properties and also they are used in our Hindu culture and other things because our traditional, our forefathers know whatever the good things they carry. So, we can use this our indigenous technique and knowledge with our scientific modern whatever we are science has been gone. So, by amalgamation of these technologies, we can use this in our organic farming. You see this is our one of the cultivated land where lots of jungle biomass is there. We are also growing different type of hedgerow species that is maybe leguminous crops. We are also growing different type of crops. So, and if we see this is two simply weeds, we have seen everywhere it is available Eupeteria moderatum and one is the lantana camera. So, it is not a cropland wheat, it is man near the bond or in the jungle or in the uncultivable land. But when we can use, we cannot directly use this to our field. They also contain a very good amount of nitrogen, more than 3 percent nitrogen on dry weight basis they contain. But if we apply directly in the field, there may be chance of this seed has got, weed seed has gone to the field and there will be weed problem. But if we use that as a for the composting material, we compost properly so that after proper decomposition, there will be many, no chance of this weed seed viable. So, most of the when seeds viable it will be gone, we can use in our agricultural field. We have also worked out what is the different type of organic biomass which is needed for composting and we have worked out there what is the nutrient content, especially for the nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium as the three is the major nutrient element. And we have species the Cajana Cajan, Cajana Stratragonia and also Indica Tictoria and T. candida, most of this they have contained nitrogen more than 3 percent. Also they have containing from 3 percent to 0.8 percent phosphorus and more than 1 percent potassium. So, whenever we are applying this type of materials in the help of the composting, either directly we can compost with the help of some waste decomposer or other things, otherwise we can also use them along with the cow dung in the process of vermicomposting. So, also we can use different type of tree biomass just like L. Nas nepalensis, Parksia roxbargi and also C. siamia, they also contain about 2 to 3 percent nitrogen and also phosphorus is very 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 7 percent. So, always we are advocating a farmers whenever he is go for organic farming to take a holistic approach. Whatever the jungle biomass is there, weed biomass is there, crop residue is there along with the leaves of the different trees as they are, if they can manage well, they can go for proper composting method. So, they can use in our organic farming. So, that this not only supply different type of major micro and macro micronutrients, but also they are enhancing the soil capability. They are increasing the soil structure, so that soil physical and biological properties will be enhanced that ultimately get to better crop yield. So, what is the different advantage of the composting? The volume reduction of the waste is very much important. Suppose we have a very high amount of organic residue and that is not well decomposed, this may be a very huge labor is needed for distributing in the field. But when we have properly decomposed, probably there is a very big, maybe 100 cubic meter square of this weight material come to 10 cubic meter square. So, that is very easy for a farmer, not only for the transport, but also apply and mixing within the soil. Similarly, I have already told they have killed the pathogens, weed seeds and seeds. They have excellent soil conditioner, they are reducing the bark density, they are increasing the aeration, enhancing the soil water holding capacity and also the nutrient retention. They also the manure handling, because everywhere if there is too much water, if 
too much there is bad order is coming even a normal labor will not hesitate to work on that but if if go for the composting process suppose if you see the vermicomposting in the final product it will be totally blackish in nature friable and it is no order and you be easily just like our tea leaves so anyone cannot object to also use work in a field also the petition reduction is there they can give additional revenue if you see any of the our market nowadays everyone want to grow different type of flower plants in their balcony so they needs a very good quality compost maybe vermi compost so if some farmers or entrepreneurs can go for this quality organic compost production and they done the certification so they can earn a huge money because by selling their produce with proper labeling in the cities similarly they have also suppress plant dead diseases and these are also provide cost saving to at least 50% of our conventional soil water pollution remediation technologies wherever applicable so this is the what is the different what is the process of the composting i have already told it is a biochemical process in which both microorganisms are occur anaerobic that's mean which need the oxygen and also the aerobic aerobic means they need the oxygen and anaerobic which don't need the oxygen so if you see this is our organic material in a field and e ultimately this is produced to a very good quality compost and if you see in the first process they are they to release a heat and thermophilic state there is lots of bacteria as you working and after that the mesophilic bacteria also working and in this biochemical process this different type of kitchen waste is ultimately going to a very good quality organic manure if you see the process the composting process if there is lots of this is the compost pile there is lots of moisture will be there whenever in the process there will be lots of heat generation carbon dioxide will be evolve and ultimately this will produce the compost product from the raw materials so temperature is also changes in the process of composting in the initial time whenever the composting is begin the temperature of the compost peat or compost heap is enhanced that that's mean we are telling it is the active phase when the temperature is very high that means decomposition is a very fast process after that when the decomposition is near to be completed the temperature again coming to the stable condition so there are lots of mesophilic thermophilic and other type of aerobic and anaerobic bacteria and other microorganisms play a very important role in the process of composting so this is the phases of composting i have already told you the whenever we have put some type of waste materials either in a peat or in a heap so what's process the initial decomposition is called by the mesophilic microorganisms this type of microorganisms what's their role they multiply rapidly whenever see there are lots of food source carbon source energy source beside them so they readily degradable compound they make after when the temperature is good above 40 degree centigrade then the mesophilic microbes are replaced by the thermophilic so that some, some other types of bacteria may be work and they will work in this condition and during the thermophilic phase high temperature accelerate the breakdown of the protein fat and complex carbohydrate most of our starch lignin and other things which is very tough to decompose in the soil and it will take time in the composting process in the when the temperature will be high with the help of this thermophilic bacteria they will be reduced to easily available sub compounds maybe that's your glucose and other amino acid after that the temperature gradually decrease and again the mesophilic bacteria will take the place of the thermophilic bacteria so by this process it's maybe one month two month or three months by this process our a one organics normal waste is converted to a very good quality compost so there are different types of methods methods and due to the over the years they has been evolved there are maybe some is bangalore method is there indoor method is there coimbatore method is there or napet method is there and if you see the indoor method of composting howard and ward indian institute of plant industry indoor they have made this process here what we had done organic waste spread in the kettle set to serve as a bedding and urine soaked material along with dung is removed every day and form a thin layer after that layering process continued for about a fortnight that is 15 days and thin layer of oen decomposed compost is sprinkled over the top and turning and repop so every time there is a need of turning after 15 to 20 days there is a need of turning is needed and the after that the heap is undisturbed about a month so uh, by another two or three months by this process our compost will be ready for use if you see this is the different type of method how can we use for the compost method we generally we have make a very length is 10 feet or more as per the requirement or convenient bread is 6 to and there is depth this is very much important 2 to 3 feet not more than 3 feet 
generally we use to recommend and lots of raw materials we can use plant residues weeds sugar cane traces leaves grasses weed ash bran and also we can use with an animal dog weed ashes water and other things so this is the indoor method of composting so by this process the we are compost will be ready in a very good quality compost and similarly see why we are filling the compost but we have to take some care first of all spread the dry waste with cattle dung and solid generally we have giving 4 is to 2 is to 1 ratio and we have to always sprinkle over so there should be enough moisture if their moisture is too dry moisture is not there then probably our decomposition process will be slow and there is a turning is very much needed i have already told you in this method first turning we are dying about 10 to 15 days second turning after the 15 days of the first turning and after two months of the second turning so three turning is needed so this is little bit also the process is little bit faster but it takes some time of labor as compared to the other method so a farmers have to see which type of composting he is need according to his labor requirement according to his soil condition climatic condition and also what is the different type of organic waste generating in his farm second method is the bangalore method so elen acharya at indian institute of science bangalore has developed this method so dry waste materials of 25 cm thick is spread in a pit a thin layer of dry waste is laid over the moisture layer and one thing is the left exposed for covering 15 days and after that it has left undisturbed for 5 months or till recovered it's mean whenever in case of indoor method we have to three times turning is needed every time we have to use different type of instruments maybe spade or other things to change the heaps to to the lower layer of the waste we have to take the surface layer but in case this methods this turning procedure we are not doing although it is taking little bit time more as compared to our previous method is the indoor method but here your labor cost has significantly reduced because you have not to turning the field and you have not to also give regular shrinking of water because whenever you made the turning that will expose to the outer surface and due to the evapotranspiration loss but if you will cover with some things and there is no turning so the soil moisture is conserved so you have to give less water as compared to the indoor method you see this is the different type of indoor method is developed we are making and after that we are covering with some plastic or anything sheets this plastic sheet will not only reduce the entry of the sunlight but also they reduce the evaporation loss of the soil moisture that is moisture because if the moisture is less your decomposition rate will be low so you have to again give the water so this is the spread 2 inch of cattle dung and urinated mud heap is made generally this is in ground from this is the ground level so up to 1.5 to 2 feet you can make this is the process by you, you can do but we cannot go after that so the always you have to think this type of things finally the heap is converted into one inch thick mud and but it will take little bit more time if you see maybe sometimes 6 to 7 month maybe sometime 8 to 9 months time is needed to completely decompose all your organic waste by this bangalore method another method is the nadem method of composting this method is developed by a howard and why do what at the institute of plant industry india this method facilitates a lot of composting through minimum use of cattle dung so one of the advantage of this when we have not so much cattle dung our cattle manure is very much less but with the help of this small amount of cattle dung we can help to compost lot other organic waste maybe plant residue jungle biomass leaf biomass and others so decomposition process here also take the aerobically so there is a need of aeration the selection of the site generally we have a made type of concrete structure tank should be located it should be generally made 10 feet by 6 feet by 3 feet and prepared with by 9 thick sand wall this is one type of structure you can see how this nafed method composting can be done but proper blocks and holes should be left in all ever you are seeing small small hole is there why it is needed in case of other two method we are putting either the pit and there is no hole but here you always told it composting down through the aerobically so there is a need of air circulation within the pit so there is lots of hole is there plastering envelope should be done by mixture of dung and cut so in this method if you can see if we can use 1400 to 15 quintal per hectare with the help of only 90 to 100 kilo of cow dung 
So our cow dung is very less. In case of a farmers have a very small cattle or he has not any cattle, he can go for this process. By using very small amount of cattle dung and with the help of this cattle dung which facilitates the decomposition of the other farm residue. And if you see we need dry seed soil also. So in the they, we are making in three layer. In the first layer plant residue was spread. In the second layer only 4 to 5 kg cattle dung in slurry. The, we cannot use directly this dung in the layer. We made take some water maybe 100 liter and we put this cattle dung and make a slurry with the mixing oil. So, after when the slurry is made we can spray over this area because our cattle dung amount is low. So, slurry is always advisable and in the third layer we are giving some soil over the second layer. So, first we are giving the plant residue maybe your weed biomass and other things uh, crop residue after that we have given sprinkling the cow dung slurry and after that you are giving the soil. And if you see this picture, this is the first layer we are doing the waste, second layer we are giving the dung and third layer we are giving the soil. By this process we can use the tank fill, but whenever we seeing, whenever over the process, when there is some parts of decomposition, this volume will be reduced. So, earlier it is filled the whole pit, but after some time it will be reduced. So, there will may be enough space available for again for again waste materials because whenever the decomposition process the volume will be less. So, again we for when if there is place again we can go for first layer that is waste and second layer is the dung and third layer is the soil. So, by this process in the but in the second filling the process of first filling is repeated and after 20 days the plant residues contracts and goes down in the tank. So, paste should be sprinkled periodically. So, by this process we can also go for our composting when our animal excreta particularly cow manure is very much limited. This is method is the Coimbra tool method. Introduced by Manikam in 1967, composting is done with pits of different size, different size depending on the waste material available. So, there is not any fixed, your pit should be in different size. If your waste material is too high, you can make a big pit. If your organic waste is very low, you should go for a small pit. And it is mo moistened with the 5 to 10 kg cow dung in 2.5 liter of water and also we are giving 0.5 to 1 kg bone meal. So, whenever this type of bone meal and other things is available, a farmer can go for this process. Similar layer laid, plaster is then removed and by this process we say also go for, whenever now we are going the nutrient profile of the compost. In the last several slides we have discussed what is the different type of composting materials, how to make our bed, how to make the peat and what is the different process of our composting method. It may be Bangalore method, it may be indoor method, it may be Naped method or it may be the Coimbra tool method. But all the methods has designed for a particular agroclimatic situation, for a particular type of waste materials when are available and also help different type of cow manure availability is there near. Suppose in case of indoor method however we have shown it is relatively rapid, but it takes different type of turning of our composting. But in case of whenever in case of Bangalore method there is no need of turning, but the time will be taken by more. Similarly in case of Coimbatore method we have seen when Naped in Naped when there is your cow dung availability is very much low, so that you want to decompose the very high amount organic residue with the help of small amount of cow dung you should go for that method. So, if you see the nutrient compost of the different type of what is the nutrient content? It generally varies with the which method you have made the compost. It also varies whatever the organic residue you are using. Suppose you are using only the legume residue and in some other parts you are organic only use the maize residue, it is not necessary in your compost N, P, K and other content will be same. But just I given a small idea the some range, generally organic matter is 70 percent, pH is you see the pH is very much neutral about 7.5. It means when you are applying this in acid soil, will you, it will increase the soil pH go, time going towards neutrality and whenever you are using too much alkaline soil, it will reduce the pH. So, it will act as a buffering capacity for the soil and also the nitrogen 1.5 to 8 percent, phosphorus 1 to 5 percent and potassium. If you see of what is our cow dung, that is only content 0 0.5, 0 0.6 some in organic residue maybe 0 0.6 percent nitrogen. But so, it is enhancing our nutrient content by 2 to 3 times. So, it will reducing the amount so that it will be easy to carry, easy to apply, easy to transport 
and there will be no bad odor and also improving the quality. So by this process, different type of composting method, we can, there are lots of organic residues available and everything is in being wasted out of the field. In organic farming, we always try to take a holistic approach, whatever the materials is present in your farm. It is may be kitchen waste, it may be organic waste, it may be crop residue, it is may be weed biomass. It is always advisable to go for some quality compost preparation and apply in the organic farm. So while we do composting, there are certain things always we have to keep in our mind. Which type of materials we cannot use in composting and which type of materials we can use in composting. So if we see what type of method materials we it always advisable to avoid for the composting method, particularly in case of organic farming. Similarly, you see some organic materials which cause problems during or after composting. Maybe we know there are some weeds or some plants that is been grown in area where lots of heavy metal is there. So the, there are some phytoremediate plant also is there, so they can absorb this heavy metal in their plant. And if we use this type of plants or this type of biomass for our composting method, so, these heavy metals can contaminate in our organic field. Similarly, the percentage there is too much oil, too much feet as they are, meat product, fish product, dairy product, unwashed egg cell, which is very tough to decompose. And they, it is generally they not only will take time for your composition process, but also they attack, invest different type of paste. So, there are a lot of other paste may be attack in this area. So, there may be some deterioration effect maybe human health or others. So, we have to avoid this type of materials. Thirdly, the weed. It, there are certain weeds, bindweed and quark grass. It is very tough to kill them. There are some type of weed where seed coat is very tough. Even after the process of decomposition, maybe 3 months or 4 months, this weed hard seed coat is not decomposed. So, if that weed seed present in our compost and we are applying in our farm, there may be high chance to enhance the weed seed bank of our organic farm. So, ultimately lots of weed in your come and it will be very tough to control. So, in that condition, if we know this type of weeds plant in this vicinity is there and they have some high dormancy, even after the decomposition process, this weed seed is or not died. So, we should not use that type of residue or organic waste for the process of composting. So, composting microorganisms, if you see, there are cellulose decomposers. Among the cellular decomposers, there are different species, Trisura spiralis, Trichoderma viridi, and for lignin decomposer, Polyporus versicular, Gonoderma lucidum, and Phenorechites chrysoporum. So, in our every organic materials, there are lost of cellulose there and lignin. And these cellular or lignins, they are complex in structure and they are very tough to decompose directly in the soil. But whenever we are go for this cellulon or lignin rich product in the process of composting and we are applying in the soil, so that plant can easily take the nutrients after their decomposition. So, the farm compost made from farm waste like sugar cane trees, paddy straw, weed and other plants, they contain about 0.9%. If you see the potassium, the nutritive value of farm compost can be increased by application of rock phosphate at the 10 to 15 kilo per ton of raw material. If you see, whenever in different type of composting method, this is called enriched compost. Well, a compost here contains certain type of nutrients. But if we apply some other things like rock phosphate, if it is not organic farming, you can also use sup single superphosphate or SSP. But in case of organic farming, we cannot use any inorganic fertilizer. But you can use rock phosphate because this is manually just dug from directly from the soil and there is no chemical process involved. So, in that condition, it is advisable to apply some type of rock phosphate some amount. So, our decomposition process will be faster and the compost will be enriched. Also, the town refuse is there. If you see in cases when the C is to N ratio, I have already told you 30 is to 1. If more than 30 is to 1, it is mean not enough food. That is, I have already told if the C N ratio is too much high, there may be some immediate immobilization of nitrogen nutrients. So, whenever we young composting residue, some of our wheat residue, rye residue and other things, it is always advisable mix with some cow dung, mix with some legume residue also, so that the average or total their combination C is to N ratio, it comes below the 30 is to 1. If you see different type of whatever their example, the food waste is very good, 
it is only 14 to 16 positive hour. COS sludge also very good, 5 to 6 is to 1, but in case of refuse stress in case of 30 to 80. So, in this condition it is always advisable to mix with some food waste or COS sludge and they go for the composting process. If we see what are the different type of animals and how much nutrient they carry, if we see in case of horse, for they produce how much everyday urine, 3 to 80 milligram per kg the live weight. It is mean if there is suppose there is 10 milligram for, for body weight and there is 1 ton per hectare, it is mean if you have a multiply for 1 kilo it will be 10 milligram, definitely just like for your 1 ton body weight there may be 10 liter of urine production per day. Similarly, they also produce quantity of dung 9 to 80 kilo per day, why in case of buffalo they will produce high. So, why it is the much necessary? Because suppose if organic farm they have some livestock, they may be have 2 cattle, 3 cattle, may be 2 buffalo, 5 goats. So, they need to know how much amount of dung is produced in my farm every day how much urine I can collect every day. So, that accordingly he can mix with other crop residue and make the compost. Similarly, whenever they are making for composting method, they need to either pit, otherwise they need to dug, otherwise a heave method or a concrete tank. So, unless he know how much cow dung or how much our urine is generated in our farm, he cannot decide the size of the compost pit. So, for this it is necessary to know and this has given just a rough idea how much urine and dung has been produced by a simple livestock. If you see the nutrient content, now this same dung has going through different process and if you see what is the nutrient value. So, first is the amount, how much generating within farm and what is the nutrient content. Generally, if you see the urine content NPK is 1.21 percent, 1.47 percent. So, we can see in case of nutritive value liquid excreta, these are very much in good there are some commercial method of composting. Previously, we are doing the small method, there is some Bangalore method, composting naped method, indoor method, Coimba tour method and also we have grown for this type of process how to do the composting. These are mostly developed by taking in the mound a farming community, maybe a big farmer or smaller marginal farmer. But what is the process of communal method? Suppose in a city, there are every day thousand on thousand of tops of waste material and these all the waste material is thrown in the garbage outside of the city. How some entrepreneur or some government organization can use this huge amount of waste in the commercial products of your composting. Otherwise, maybe some entrepreneur or some private company can come who want to sell this vermicompost or compost in different market of India. In that condition, he have to produce a huge quantity of compost. For this, this commercial method of composting is used, where you are showing that is window composting method very long log we have making very high big big size maybe 100 meter 200 meter length we have made the compost pit above the soil. And also aerated compost bin is there. So, material mixed and form in the windows, compost turned and mixed periodically and aerated by natural or passive air movement composting time is 3 to 6 months. Similarly, if we case the aerated compost mix, composting time is little bit less, but the curing time is more than 2 months. So, this type of different type of commercial composting method is also available and a entrepreneur or a something it is up to his choice which method is beneficial for him or her farm. Now, one is now we come to the OS decomposer. If we see the OS decomposer has been produced by one of our government organization that is NCOF National Center for Organic Carbon. So, it is help the decompose of lots of organic residues, but it contain not only any one microorganisms, it is a consortium of microorganisms, different type of microorganisms is there and from where they have extracted, they have extracted from the desi cow dung. It is supposed to tell that in our desi cow, in the dung, in the urine, they have some nutrition value some antibiotic value and also there are lots of beneficial microbes present as compared to our hybrid or ex exotic breeds of cattle. So, they have extracted this cow dung different type of microbes, make a consortium and they now NCOP is marketing throughout the India. But they has a very long shelf life of 3 years. So, if you purchase a bottle of this waste decomposer, 
you can store in your home temperature not need of you have to refrigerate it in your home for 3 years. So, that is a sufficiently good time and it is recommended not any crop specific. You can use any type of crops where there are lots of any waste product is there you can decompose and if you see it cost is only 20 per bottle when it is very cheap. Any small marginal a poor farmer can afford for 20 rupees and it is not necessary every time you have to bar, buy, purchase this OS decomposer from the NCO. With this OS decomposer method I will tell how you can increase the enhance the capacity and you can also produce more and more OS decomposer if you need for a large amount of organic residue. If you see from one bottle he can purchase only 20 rupees and he can produce, he can make the residue 1000 ton, 1000 ton of organic residue it can be decomposed with the help of a single bottle of 20 rupees only. And if you see what is the process of the mass multiplication? We are always tell in case of whenever there is suppose I have purchased a bottle and this bottle 500 milliliter, they may not be sufficient to spray if we have enough organic residue. So, what to do? Simply we make a big drum and we have taken 200 liter of water. After this 200 liter of water we add 2 kilo of the jaggery, simply jaggery which is available in the market. You put the jaggery and you mix it well either you are just grinding it mix otherwise with the help of some sticks you mix it well. So, your 200 liter solution is ready. After that you open the bottle and pour the content in the solution and you stir well with your rods maybe with some sticks and other things and you just cover the pot. The your OS decomposer is ready within 5 days. It is mean what is the role of this sugar? Every microbes they need some food because they are living organisms they need some energy. This jaggery is providing them the energy also the food. So, they are multiply. So, their population will be enhanced so that whatever the population concentration is present within this only small bottle that will multiply many times and that will be now present in this 200 liter of solution. Now, this 200 liter of solution we I think we can use in a lots of organic residue which is not possible if we apply only 500 ml of rupees 20 this bottle. So, if you see this is the waste decomposer method and what is the process of quick decomposing? I need our materials may be less but we need very easily decompose, we cannot wait too much time. So, what to do? Mixed a bottle OS decomposer with jaggery in 200 liter water and spread the organic waste as a plastic sheet, maintain always maintain 60 percent moisture, always we need there is too much moisture only that their population of this different type of microbial consortia will be enhanced and turnover the compost is 7 days interval. So, there is a need of turnover, the lower side compost will take the upper side and compost is ready to use after 40 days. Previously, I have already told in case of Bangalore method and other method 5 months, 6 months, 7 months is needed there is for the waste decomposition. But within the help of this decomposition process from 3 months, 4 months we can produce a good quality compost with only 40 days. It is very much cheap, you have to purchase only one times and the time is also less so that it is being too much popular nowadays in India and we should always promote this type of innovative composting materials in our organic farming. Now, you can also use your decomposed material either as a soil is a seed treatment is a foliar spray and other. A bottle OS decomposer is thoroughly mixed with 30 gram jaggery and you preparation to treat 20 gram of seeds. So, suppose we want to there in our field there may be lots of organic residue is there. We have harvested the rice crop, there are lots of rice residue which are fall over in the field. So, we have to grow for next crop probably wheat may be pea. So, their time is very less and they whenever crop residue is present they also they help in different way, but they also interfere with the sowing operation of the next crop. So, in this condition what we can do? whatever after the sowing there may be this residue kept in the field and it will take time for the decomposition. So, in that condition what we are advocating simply whatever the waste decomposer material is there you mix with some 30 gram jaggery. Why jaggery? Because whenever you make with this jaggery it will give them the food and energy and they are also sticky in nature. Otherwise, if you only above given above the seed 
probably your seed will not attach with them. But with the jaggery, this microbial consortia, it attached to the seed. And after this, that whenever you use this seed for your planting for the crops, so automatically whatever the microbial consortia present in only single bottle that has gone throughout your field. So, it is uniformly distributed. You can also use as a foliar spray. Mass multiplied liquid waste decomposer culture, but how you used? We should directly use this small bottle, then it will be easily finished. We have to purchase more bottle. So, always we are advocating you mix in water 1 is to 10. If you give 1 liter, 1 bottle of your waste decomposer, you take 10 bottle of this same size for water and after that you can spray over your the crop residue in your field. Now, I am coming to the vermicomposting. If you see vermicomposting is very popular, it is very old traditional method. That is why in traditionally in our system, we are always called our earthworms as the friends of the farmers. The vermi composting comes from two words, vermis mean the worm and cultura mean the growth. So, vermi composting is a simple biotechnological process of composting in which certain species of earthworms are used to enhance the process of waste conversion and produce a better product. It is a method of preparing and rich compost with the use of earthworms and it is one of the easiest methods to recycle agricultural waste to produce quality compost. So, whenever we are using some different composting methods, this composting is a time taking process, sometimes it take 4 months, 5 months, 6 months and if you see, if we use, they are in the nature provides for everybody's need, in nature provides different type of earthworms. And these earthworm are extremely helpful for decomposing of our organic residuals. What they do? They eat up all these organic residue and whenever in the eat up process, whatever the organic food is there, it goes through their body and come as a excreta. So, in the process, their quality is enhanced, nutrient enrichment is also there and ultimately we get a very good quality compost. And if you see, the vermicompost is stable fine granular organic manure which enrich the soil quality by improving its physiochemical and biological properties. Beside whenever we are applying this vermicompost in our field, lots of eggs of the earthworms as well as the small earthworms going also to the field. So, in that condition our field is also enriched. They burrow within the field and after the burrowing lots of water and air entry should be there. Or bug density of the decrease, porosity is increased. So, a plant growth is better. So, vermicompost has a very finer structure than ordinary compost. If you see any good quality vermicompost, it will very easily friable black to brown in color just like our tea leaves. There is no order and there is a very much high market demand for the cities who are doing the roof garden or maybe different type of plants, ornamental plants especially indoor or outside in the balcony and they are very much more than 25, 30, 40 rupees a kilo. Vermicompost have outstanding chemical and biological properties with plant growth regulators. So, when they have pras in the body of the earthworm, they also release some type of PGR, like it is may be also plant growth regulator and also hormones, oxygen, gibberellin and other things. So, they also helps the promote of the plant growth. Similarly, vermicompost work is a soil conditioner and its continued application over the years lead to total improvement in the quality of the soil and farm land, even the degraded and sodic soil. So, vermicompost is a very important role. In organic farming, it is always advisable to use vermicomposting because you cannot use your inorganic fertilizer. You cannot use lots of compost you cannot purchase from the market because that will be cost will be too high. Your organic farming not will not be sufficient, it will not be sustainable, your cost will be production more. But if you can produce the vermicompost in his own farm, it will save the money from purchasing from the market it will also ensure the quality of your crop produce with giving very less amount of compost. And there are lots of earthworm is available within the native, otherwise this earthworm can be purchased one time from any good source and after that you can multiply this earthworm. And this earthworm population you can also do a business by selling the earthworm because they are very much preferred throughout the composting mainly the vermicomposting cultures. So, what is the vermicompost you see is content 1.5 to 2 percent nitrogen also 1.5 to 2.2 percent phosphorus and potassium. It also contains certain enzymes like amylase, lipase, cellulase and cetinase. And they also the soil enzyme activities enhance such as urease, phosphosarase and phosphodiesterase. 
has significantly more C and near neutral PG. They have also contained neutral PG. That is the very good, just like our compost, our vermicompost pH is neutral. So, whenever we are applying over the years, this vermicompost may be 5 ton, 2 ton, 3 ton, they also help the enhance the soil pH in case of acidic soil and they also reduce the soil pH in case of alkaline soil. So, may they try to make the soil near neutral condition, so that in the near neutral condition, most of our plant nutrients becomes available. And when the plant nutrients become available, plant can easily uptake that and growth and yield will be better. Vermicompost has a high very porosity, I have already told. So, because porousness is there, surface area is very high, they also help in the aeration. Drainage and water holding capacity, they also help the water holding capacity of the soil. Suppose you are applying some crop in the winter season, there is no rain, you have not the irrigation potential, irrigation, you can only one or two ripe seed irrigation. If you continuously apply vermicompost or other compost in your field, the water holding capacity will be enhanced. So, that your crop can take sufficient moisture from the soil without giving any extra irrigation and that will result in better yield and more profit. So, what is the requirement of the vermicomposting process? The container is needed because you need maybe a container, you make a plastic seed, you make a brick culture, you may make peat also or heap also, there are different type of processes. Also bedding materials, bedding materials whatever you will give in the lower side. In the lower bottom, you can make a cementum one, you can make some straw, some mud and other things. So, if you see banana stem peel, square, coconut leaf, grasses also use, moisture content all of you have to maintain in the vermicomposting pit, minimum 30 to 40 percent. Otherwise, if it will be dry, your earthworm will be diet. If the earthworm population will be decreased, then your decomposition process will be slower. Similarly, temperature, we should not go very high temperature, 20 to 30 degrees optimum. And there should not be direct sunlight come. If the sunlight directly coming to the vermicompost thing, so sometimes what happened in that condition, the moisture has gone out. And moisture is gone out, your population will be decreased. Similarly, sometimes we are also promoting to use different type of mace wire and other things in your composting tank. Sometimes birds are coming to eat these earthworms. So, you have to protect your earthworms. Sometimes there are lots of ants is there, they also attack the earthworm. So, sometime in the periphery of this compost, a vermicomposting tank, we are using some type of water, so that at and cannot directly use. Vermicomposting materials, animal excreta, kitchen waste, farm residue and forest litter. Cree rod materials also can be used like cow dung. Mixture and leguminous and leguminous enrich the quality, I have already told. In case of leguminous crop residue, nitrogen content will be high. C is to N ratio will be low. In, while in case of our other like wheat or uh, rice straw, our nitrogen content is low, carbon content is high, C in N ratio will be very high. So, if we properly mixture in along with the help of some cow dung, we are mixing some amount of cow dung, along with layer by layer we are giving different type of crop residue, maybe we can use also the cereal residue, legume residue and our vegetable waste. So, by this process we can also enhance the quality of our vermicompost. There are lots of procedure, two procedure I want to tell, one is peat method. It condition, this is picture is the peat. You can make a concrete peak, you can make the peak with the help of different type of bricks, you can also different type of peat made by with the plastic sheet, also other and separate method is the heap, where you can simply put all of your organic waste along with mixing with the cow dung layer by layer wise above the soil. So, if the diamonds and bedding material is given, in the second layer you can give organic layer, in the third layer you can give dung and water equal mixture, the continue the layer up to a certain level. So, one layer organic residue may be crop, again cow dung, again this process you can go up to certain 3 to 4 feet height and this earthworm always move, they may generally feed from the top and they go to the pattern. So, initially different type of process and sometime we have to need the turning up of the material, so that our decomposition process in the vermicomposting will be easier. And if you see after certain days, whenever we are using for the vermicompost, whenever we using any type of organic residue, weed or other, we should not directly give in the tank. It is always advisable to keep all your residue under 10 to 15 days under shade for certain period. So, when their heat will be less, they are little bit decomposed, after that the partially materials we can apply in the field. And after the heat cool down, holes should be dug and 50 to 100 earthworms should be dropped in each hole. After few days, earthworms will begin consume the organic matter and leave rich casting behind. Similarly, on the bed method, composting is done on the pakka or kacha floor by making of organic manure. In the peat method, composting is done in cemental peat. The size is 5, 5, 3, it is not uniform. 
you can make according to your convenience, according to your how much amount organic waste you are generating. The unit is covered with thatch grass, I have already told whenever you are covering with the soil, your evaporation loss of the water will be less, so the soil moisture will be conserved. And this method sometimes is not preferred due to the proof of preparation and there may be water logging at the bottom when there is too much rain is coming and water is coming from the outside to your pit, so water entry will be there. So, if there is too much water, then earthworm will be face problem. So, the, what is the different phases of vermicomposting? It involves the collection of waste, shredding, mechanical separation of the mills, then pre-digestion of the organic waste by heaping the material along the cow dung slurry. I have told whatever the organic material is there, we are not advocating to use directly in the vermicomposting pit. You keep for 20 days side near about your cattle shed where there is some cattle dung or urine is there, so that will be partially decomposed. This partially digest material feed for the earthworm consumption. Otherwise, earthworm cannot eat directly a raw rice straw and any very dry materials. So, cattle dung and biogas slurry may be used. Preparation of earthworm bed, the third page, a concrete bed you can make so that there will be good quality vermicompost. And whenever there is the produce, when you can get your browny or blackish materials is ready like tea leaves, whatever you take for a tea, there is no order, your vermicomposting is ready. But how to take? You have to collection of the earthworms is needed. You cannot directly apply the vermicompost and in your field. So, all the earthworm also go. You have to collect your earthworm. Generally, you can do by sieving method, some different type of meshes are used, so that Vermi compost will be passed, but whatever the earthworms they will keep above the sieve. So, you can use this earthworm for your next pit. Similarly, also you can pit this type of piece structure and you put in the sunlight. So, what is the necessary? This earthworm do not like the direct sunlight. So, all the earthworm they will move to the lower side. And where the earthworm will move to the lower side, this area you can directly use as a field and the lower part earthworm will be there. You can collect by screening and you can use for your next organic pit or side by organic pit. So, storing the vermicompost also very much needed. Probably you cannot apply the vermicompost tomorrow. So, it is always to convert to in a seal bag so that the moisture will not grow out or the moisture should not be entry. In a seek any plastic or any gunny bag you can keep and use for future. So, harvesting, stop watering one before harvesting. All the worms spread across the pit come closer and form balls, heap the compost by removing the balls. The material is then sieved in 2 millimeter sieve, I have already told 2 millimeter sieving should be done, so that the earthworm will be in the top and all your material. You see, you just like our tea, our chai patta, it is very easily free flowing, there is no order and very you can handling by your hand, it will not also stick to your hands. So, uh, when this condition happen, you can tell our vermicompost is being prepared and after that you can pack it, you can make it certification organic and you sell in the market. The turnover conversion rate, generally if you see 1000 earthworms may convert 5 kg waste material per day. So, if you put in a particular 1000 earthworms in 5 kilo per day, within one month they can consume 150 kilo, within three months 450 kilo. So, if your organic waste is more, more amount you, you not need to convert into vermicompost, you have to give more amount of earthworm. So, this is the simple you have to calculate and accordingly you have to mate. So, what is the advantage? It is rich in all essential plant nutrients. It is free flowing, easy to apply handle. It improves the soil structure aeration. It is rich in microflora, I have already told. Like different type of phosphorus solubilizer is there, cellulose decomposed microflora is there. It also contains cocoons. So, whenever we apply in the soil, it also increases the biodiversity and the numbers of these earthworms in the soil that is also very much needed and this is the indirect help of the vermicompost. It is also free from pathogens, can minimize the insect rest and can also the decomposition. And if you see there are different type of earthworms is used. Somewhere we are using in our question two earthworms very much important. One is Eudrilus eugeni that is night crawler and one is Isenia poetida. They are a very high vigorously, this type of earthworm mostly we are using organic farming and there are lots of characteristics we have to know we know there are different characteristics there and you have to use this type of any two type is recommended. And if you see there are lots of biological advantages, when they enter into the soil, they play a very major role for converting large species of organic matter. They also secrete some type of growth regulator in their from their intestine. So, this plant growth regulators and hormones like oxygen, gibberellin also helping the plant. So, they are supplying nutrient, also supplying the different type of growth, plant growth hormones. So, if you see, a cattle dung, why you are making only 0.4 to 1 percent, 
but vermi compost is 1.5 to 5 percent so quality is enhanced suppose you have 100 kilo of cattle dung and 100 kilo of crop residue for 100 kilo cattle dung when we are mixing with the 100 kilo of straw we make 200 kilo vermi compost and quality is also enhanced 2 to 3 times so and also if we need 3 kilo FYM or cow dung for a single plant, vermi compost 1 kilo will be sufficient. So, by this process, you can enhance the quantity of your total compost and also the quality. And if also the different type of process is there, if you show most of the cases our vermi compost, the concentration of A, N, P, K, and other micronutrient is higher as compared to the aerobic and anaerobic compost. So, vermi compost always a better previsible process if you have sufficient time amount of earthworm in your farm. And always we are advocating deep time of composting culture in our agricultural field. We are different type, we have go to the farmer's field, we are giving some plastic to them. So, they are making composting pit in their field and you can easily see in this picture how the farmers are making their vermi compost in malls plastic beds. It is very easy and we have also the farmers, some of the farmers are very much innovative. They use this vermi compost, pack it and sell in the market. So, they also get some additional income. And by this integrated organic farming system, when we are promoting a farmers to go for organic farming, you always try to make your compost within your own farm. If you have to purchase from the compost or vermi compost, then it will not be sustainable. So, in this condition, whatever the crop residue is there, we are always advocating to go for compost or vermi compost. And that will help for giving the organic source of nutrients to your plants. Then only your organic farming will be profitable and sustainable. Thank you.